webinar. Ten considerations for selecting the perfect destination for your meeting. My name is Shimo with DMAI, that's Destination Marketing Association International. And as many of you may know, DMAI is the trade association for Convention and Visitor Bureaus and Empowerment.com is the web portal where you can find all the best CVBs in one location. And CVBs are known to help you find the best fit for your meeting no matter what the size or where you're headed. And facilitating today's discussion is Terry Roberts. Hi, Terry. Hey, Shimo. Good morning, everyone. And we're also very happy to have with you with us today two veteran experts in the field of destinations and selecting destinations. And first we have Jennifer Johnson. Uh, Jennifer is the general manager and owner of the Johnson Meetings Group. And they're an independent meeting planning, management, and consulting firm located in Raleigh, North Carolina. She has managed events as small as leadership meetings of six at an airport executive lounge to large international attended conferences with more than 800 attendees. Her clients come from IT services, insurance, life sciences, and publishing companies. So Jennifer, thank you very much for joining us today. Happy to be here. And um, your co-host here is Jerry Sito, first vice president, convention development with NYC and Company. Jerry is responsible for the organization's convention sales department, team, and strategy, overseeing NYC and Company's network of sales representatives in three U.S. cities, along with their, your New York-based um, staff dedicated to MICE representatives in the UK and Ireland, also focusing on continued evolution of New York City as a highly competitive convention destination. And, you know, Jerry, it's really great to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Jerry, are you there with us? Great. Well, I'm sure Jerry's going to be right back with us. Now, before we get going and jumping right into our um, webinar this morning, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, if you have some questions for our panelists, please feel free to um, type in your questions in your question box. And if we have time afterwards, we'll certainly uh, make sure that we ask the panelists your questions. And uh, speaking of questions, we, we'll, we like to really start to um, our morning with just one question for all of the audience. So I've launched a quick poll for you to answer. And go ahead and feel free to start um, answering this question. What is the highest number of destinations you are currently considering or have considered for one of your meetings? Is it only one destination, two to four destinations, five to nine destinations, or ten destinations or more. So um, let's make sure we give time for everyone to answer. We've got about 56% of you that have already voted. But let me ask you, Jennifer, um, about your experience in terms of the number of destinations you are either currently considering or have considered. Um, I think my record for one program was um, five different destinations, and we didn't do that simultaneously. The client had a preferred destination, and the program was the proverbial square peg trying to go in the round hole. So we had to open up that search to multiple other destinations, and it, it gets complicated after a while. And if I didn't have my CVB partners, it would be even more time consuming on my end. So. Um, Five, I'll get my record. Well, let's see what the audience has said. So um, it seems like the majority of those that are on the call are generally um, you know, having to consider the two to four destinations or five to nine destinations. That's the highest number of destinations. And as you just said, Jennifer, it could be um, an unwieldy task uh, trying to manage the uh, responses um, of those uh, hotels and those destinations. So I think that um, that is probably a great segue, Terry, to begin today's um, discussion. And again, thank you very much for all of you for joining us today. Thanks, Cheryl. 
You know, it's, it's true that CVBs do make perfect meeting planning partners, and, and we think that's true for a number of reasons. Um, obviously, we're in the business of find, um, but there's also some really unique qualities that CVBs bring to the table that, you know, perhaps their destination partners or other find partners may or may not to different levels or degrees. But their comprehensive view of the destination um, allows them to really open up and show you nuances of everything and to make sure that you don't miss any of possibilities. And I think whenever you are considering any destination, unearthing what the locals know and tapping into local expertise is of great value. And then the ability to, as Jennifer just mentioned, kind of tap in to in-market relationships, to not have to vet those relationships for yourself. So as planners, you have a lot of decisions to make when planning an event. And you know, when it gets right down to the nitty-gritty of picking the right hotel and selecting the right food and beverage offerings, even hiring speakers or sourcing good transportation, those are all things that CBBs can help you with. But none of these things really get teed up or get put into place until you've found the right destination. So with so many cities to choose from, how do you get you know, a pet on? How do you get the read on which of those five or which of those eight is the best destination for a particular group or a particular meeting? So today we're really going to focus in the business of find around three major components. First of all, getting a handle on analyzing your own group's dynamics or demographics, um, really considering all of the elements that will come together that include cost, constraint, or budget. And then last, keying into some specific questions with the help of Jennifer and hopefully Jerry if he's back, um, to be able to really hone in on that great fit. So let's start, Jennifer, by teeing up this whole piece of demographics. Um, when you first begin to think about you know, where we want to take a particular meeting, how do you assess um, the meeting itself and the attendees and you know, what is most important to them? And, and where do, how do you get the ball rolling? Where do you get a destination list? And then how do you begin that first whittle down? Well, Actually, I start with a lot of questions to my meeting sponsor on who's coming and what the focus is, because I need to understand what's important to the meeting sponsor and the meeting attendees. Obviously, you don't want to do a, an incentive program in a downtown convention hotel with not a lot of interesting attractions and fun options around. So, you know, as planners, it's incumbent on us to understand what the results are, what, what the results goal is for the meeting. And then I sit and I and I find out where they're flying in from, kind of what the budget is. Um, you know, if they're if they're looking for a resort destination and a warm climate, but they're on, you know, they're coming from the Pacific Northwest, then maybe Miami isn't the first choice to think about. Maybe we want to think about something on the West Coast or maybe even the Texan coast or something else something along those lines. And Jennifer, um, even like what that word resort means, right? Because what yeah, I think, exactly. yeah, right? I mean, even what I think resort means and what you think resort means, right, right. Can, can vary so much. Right. And, and the other thing that's always very paramount is, is to get an idea of what their budget is because, um, you know, tier one cities are great and there's a lot of attractions here and there's a lot of hotel inventory and there's easy airlift and, you know, it's got all of the support that you need for that for that program, but it also has usually a pretty pricey um, cost associated with it because it is tier one, it is in demand, um, unless you happen to be there at an off time. And so then you can look to your tier two and tier three cities if they make sense for you know arrival and departure patterns and costs and what the focus of the group is. You know, it's Myrtle Beach and, and Miami Beach are two completely different things, but Myrtle Beach might be much more cost effective for the group and, and still have, you know, that that warm weather resort type of feel kind of thing, but it's going to be a very different experience and it has to be the right group. So this is really about the step of creating your wish list, of making sure that you really understand objective needs, desires in an ideal situation. What would you like to garner from a destination? Jerry, do you have audio with us now? 
Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Jerry, Jennifer just Wonderful. commented. Jerry, uh, Jennifer just commented on the whole piece around, you know, really understanding objective of meeting and and what you know the attendees would prefer. Tell me, as a as a CVB partner, how much do you want to know about group demographics, and what do you actually do with that information? Because I know a lot of times people want to start with rate states and space, and and you want to back up from there. What do you want to know before you ever talk about rate states and space? Well, first of all, I want to apologize. It looks like we had a little bit of some audio, uh, so I'm glad I'm back online with everything. Um, but we definitely want to hear all about the group rate space and dates are important, and we need to know those. But the more we know about your group and the attendees for your group, the better we can be in guiding you and your staff in selecting a venue or a um, hotel uh, within our city. And not only those, but then leading you down the path as far as once the meeting is booked in this city, how can we connect the folks um, and the resources within our city to the meeting planner so they get the most out of the experience? That's that's a great point. And I think I always like to think that rate states and space you know, kind of helps you get fit, but really understanding group dynamics helps you get the delighters, right? That That helps you get what will really make a difference. Absolutely. The way that we always put it when we're doc talking with our planner friends and, and um, our, our customers is, you know the group, you know what's important to them, you know the dynamics of your attendees, we know the city, and we know what to suggest after we have a real clear picture of the entire group, what they represent, and also another point, what you want to accomplish. Maybe like Match.com. What do you think there? There you go. <laughs> I, never, I never really had that visual until you were saying that. So, Jennifer, so now you sort of have your wish list created, and now you kind of head to, to point two, or, or the second consideration is really will you fit? And there's kind of two kinds of fit. You're looking for a physical fit, right? Where do I get where, you know, we can actually, you know, take the group in terms of our parameters, but then that psychological fit. And what do you consider? Oh. Well, the psychological fit is, is, you know, it's the intangible. So to talk about the physical fit, you know, are you doing a citywide conference? Do you want to be a, a little fish in a pond or do you want to be the big fish in the little pond and, and you know, be really, really important um, to that destination or, or do you want to be one of many and I think that's always um, important and you want to make sure that you're looking at the right types of venues for the group and, and what they they need to do that. Um, I, I think some of the research that we did on this they really talked about if you want to be one of many in there or if you if you do want to be that big fit. You know the psychological um, fit that goes on there is you know is, is it the right thing? I mean are you are you taking a, a leadership meeting? They're going to talk about, you know, downsizing and outplacement and things like that, and it's a real meaty subject. And, you know, you don't necessarily want to take those people to a resort in a beach location because that's, you know, not going to be real conducive to what they're doing. It's it's sort of a, we'll leave a bad taste in some people's mouths. Um, at the same time, if it's going to be an incentive group or something you want to look at a, a, a destination that offers a lot of fun and attraction and, and appeal as a destination in and of itself um, so that there are lots of activities. Good point. If I could just, just it, sure, go, go ahead, ahead. Jared. I was going <laughs> to say, if I, can just, if I can just jump in there as far as on the um, psychological, that is really where a CBB can help because um, we're here to make sure that a customer, a client, an attendee do not feel overwhelmed or underwhelmed about a right. destination. So we're here to point out everything that is available to them and put it in a nice box and serve it up to everyone. Jerry, you recently did a blog with us about you can look at New York as this enormous destination or you could look at it as you know five small town boroughs and there's a perfect fit for you in one of those places. Exactly. I mean, um, as far as New York City goes, we're a collection of neighborhoods. And at times, our customers um, can be overwhelmed when they first come to us. That's where we step in and really shrink it down to say, you know what, 
we can be and have that small time feeling in the big city answer if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you need. Yeah, I thought that was a great way to look at, at New York City. I'd never really thought of it that way, and I think that's very cool. So Jennifer, once you then are narrowing down who we are and where, you know, what kind of fit we're looking for and you get some of the, the basics out of the way, then you have to get down to the nitty-gritty of figuring all this stuff out. I mean, this is even difficult when, you know, you're trying to figure out your summer vacation, you know, mm -hmm. airlift and, and ticket price points and driving, you know, and then how do you get around once you get there? So how do you figure all this out? Well, again, this is where I turn to my CVB partner. I have done comparison grids, and I've gone to each of the um, nations we were considering for a program, and I said, okay, my attendees are coming out of these feeder cities, and can you give me the number of flights you have per week, the average cost per ticket, you know, who the carriers are, that information, so that I have all of it, so we know what it's like to get into town. Um, you know, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is, a tier two and a half city, you know. Um, I, it's, I think it's a little bit bigger than three, and maybe not quite a two. And and we've got great facilities here as far as convention ho uh, convention center, good supporting hotels, boutique properties. We've we've got all of that. And our struggle in this market is is you know, ground transportation because we don't have the big transportation companies that tier one cities like New York um, can offer. And so sometimes it's a challenge if there's a lot of a lot of programs going on. I mean, this market supports 14 universities and a lot of corporate headquarters, and then you've got the meetings that are inbound. And so there's a lot of demand for those type of things um, and services. So you really have to turn to your CV partners and you know see who they're if they're a member bureau or if they just list service providers that that focus on the meetings industry, and really do a little bit of research. And if you have the lead time and if you um, and, and you have a really good relationship with your your um, CBB person, whether it's the salesperson or the services person, you know they can help you develop those lists of service providers and the kind of airlift that's in and out of there and whatever else you might need. You know, if you're looking at a downtown destination, you know, is it walkable? Are things to do in the evening? Or is everybody gonna have to take a taxi out to the to the suburbs to get to dinner or something? So it's you really do go and I'm the queen of lists and questions and things like that and I just I develop a profile for my meetings and then I develop a profile that I want the CVBs I can give to me because it puts it in a format that I can work with because every CVB has their own marketing materials and they're all fantastic and full of great information but sometimes I need to compare apples to apples quickly and cut and paste into my grids. And Jerry, care to comment on um, you know CVBs in general being able to give that kind of very detailed information to their planners. Absolutely, Terry. And Jennifer, I'm glad to hear that you do use the CVBs and DMOs in this way because sometimes customers don't think that we have this information. Um, another point is that we have the most updated information. A lot of these things on this list change, can change. CVB contact and partner to make sure you have the most up-to-date information um, so you can make the most updated and educated decision on where to go. Yeah, the thought of collecting all this on your own is sort of mind-numbing. So let's move on to consideration number four, which is the meetings and hotel infrastructure. You know, really kind of understanding, and Jerry, I've taken the liberty of making a copy here of your um, mapping of your Google map of airport and hotel facilities um, in New York here um, from Empowerment. And Great. I think it, it speaks to just how overwhelming sometimes understanding meetings and hotel infrastructure can be. And Jennifer, getting a, a lay of the land here, how, how is that for you? Um, I think that's good. That's um, you know, I always turn to my CVB's partners because I, don't, I always tell my CVB partners that they make me look like a rock star to my clients because they make me look like I'm an expert in whatever destination my client is interested in. And so for that, Jerry and, and all your colleagues, thank you very much. Um, but one thing that, that is good is, you know, if we're looking at a certain hotel, how far is it 
from the airport and is there mass transit options that are easy for people who are unfamiliar with that airport and that destination. Um, it, it's absolutely paramount to be able to do that. Um, looking at this map snapshot, it's got a lot of, I think it's a really good foundation on, on, on where to begin and, and then you can hone in on that. I'm sure like any map application you can zoom in and, and go to street level and talk about you know blocks even if you wanted to um, and I, I think that's good. Um, the, uh, I'm not sure if if you're going to be able to compare apples to apples looking at history, if, if you're going to have that level of detail because things like that to, to me are new, relatively new is looking at these type of map applications. So I think it's definitely something to work on and, and continuing with and I think one of the advantages of a power map, and I know you'll talk about it later, is the fact that it can keep a lot of history for you and I imagine it can capture that type of information as well. Well just being able to compare I think destination to destination what your, oh, yeah. what your considerations are. As we move on to, to five, you know, it's, it's how do you create that buzz? You know, how, what do you then, Jennifer, um, what do you first consider when you are looking to all of the things that you might engage your attendees in outside the physical constraints of the meeting? Well, and again, I look at it from a strategic standpoint, you know, what's the demographic of the group? Are they going to be more interested in, you know, is it going to be a bunch of engineers, which is an 85% group of men, and they're going to be more interested in, let's see if we can get a golf outing or go see a professional football game, as opposed to a group of ladies who might be more interested in like a historic home tours or a um, something a little more with broader interest to them, a ladies golf outing, you know, specifically or that type of thing. And and then you have to look at the schedule and how much time because I really don't like to tout a destination and all there is to do it to a group that doesn't have time to get out of the hotel because they're in meetings for all day and then they have social functions in the evening. So really it's a it's a it's a balancing act of of seeing what is available as far as time goes to the group and what's of appeal. And then once you do that, I turn to my CVB partner again and say, you know, what can you do? And, and the example that comes to mind is in Chicago, I had a group and they really wanted to go see a Cubs game. And of course the Cubs were the World Series champions that year. We couldn't get tickets anywhere. But then my CVB partner told me of this other place that's right outside of Wrigley and you can look in and it's, it's amazing. I would have never found that on my own, most likely, in the time frame that I had to do the research. So, again, it's always about your CVB partners, and as Jerry said, they want to know more than dates, rates, and um, availability. They just want to know, is it, you know, what the group is like, what's going to be interesting to them, and then they can help you find a match within their destination. And Jen, I think you point out, uh, have a really great point here, and I'll just kind of fold in and then move to the next slide for Jerry to answer. But I think that the real key, because uh, I think many of the planners might look at this list and go, I can find most of this stuff on the internet, and you would be right. What you can't find is that next to the last bullet is something you can't find anywhere else. You know, how can they let you in on some right. secret? Like, yeah, you can't get tickets, but if you go to this particular restaurant, you can view the field and have this cool, you know, experience. Exactly. Exactly. So, Jerry, what about um, this lay of the land in terms of really understanding how what's going on in the city at the time that you're there or construction or new development? How can a CVB partner help planners with this particular consideration? Jerry, are you there? We got all kinds of audio issues. I think it's flustered, I think it's flustered us all. Jen, do you care to comment on this? Particular yeah, I, I actually can because um, that's one thing. You know, just like as planners, we always ask our hotels, "Do you have any remodeling or construction projects on schedule?" I go ask. You know, my CBB partner. The the best one is you know in. 1999, I remember asking somebody in Boston, okay, is the big dig really over yet or is it still there? Um, because they can tell you what's going on and, it, and it's not just, you know, the construction and new development and what's going on, you know, a lot of cities are having the downtown renaissance rebirths and things like that and that's always interesting and the CVBs can tell you about that. But they can also tell you what else is going on. I mean, I 
I had a segue day from um, a group recently in South Florida, and there was a giant techno music festival there. And you know, had I known about that when I booked the meeting, I might not have booked the meeting at the hotel that I did. I might have gone one that was a little bit further away from those concert venues. Um, but it's it's one of those things that the CBB again has a master calendar. They know what's going on. You know, they can tell you if there's a citywide and and you're not going to find, you know, a hotel for your, a one hotel property for your meeting program over those dates because of that citywide, or, you know, there's a, there's a rate compatibility clause in, in effect, and it's going to cause your rates to be higher because of the citywide. So absolutely, the CBB can, can really give you some good insight. And then ultimately, Jennifer, you have to, you know, move on to this, you know, seventh consideration, which is really at the end of the day, all about overall cost as you build in all of your parameters and and desires, and even what the attendance pull from a particular destination might be able to garner you. And so, tell me how you sort of determine at the end of the day, is it worth it to take a meeting to one city versus another? Well, and again, that depends on what the desired ROI outcome is. Um, you know, I have one client, and, and he's, his spend per meeting attendee is pretty generous, um, but they want to, this is, this is an advisory group, and they're pulling people away from their jobs and their homes to, to come and tell them how to work with their vendor better, and so they really have to make it a seamless experience for them and a pleasant experience for them. Um, so they want to be in a warm weather climate because they don't want them to have to deal with any weather issues. And they want to be in a nice property. And so we want to make sure that it's, you know, if it's a, if it's a St. Regis or a Ritz-Carlton or something like that, we want to make sure it's one that, you know, had some recent refurb or attention or relatively new construction. And the CVB can, can tell you all of those things. And, and you look at your airlift and your, your food costs and, and everything. and, and um, basically build a mock budget um, in broad strokes to make sure that it that that you're knowing what your spend is going to be and and make sure that that's something that your um, that your meeting sponsor is comfortable with and you know a lot of clients will find out as I was mentioning earlier you know they want to go to a tier one city but you know maybe they they can't they don't have the dates available and if you look at a tier, a tier two city there might be you know, something that's comparable and will offer a similar experience. And right, or even in all destinations, regardless of size, even if you take the size out of it, that, you know, with enough exploration, there's something to fit every budget. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Jen, what about um, the green factor? Um, you know, some, I know more and more cities are, are taking the environment seriously and extending this consciousness um, to their meetings and their convention business, um, you know, how do you assess and, and how often is this a concern for you as you put meetings together? Well, it's becoming more and more. You're, the clients are asking for it more and more. They're looking for LEED certified properties. They're looking for, um, you know, they're, they're looking for different practices, not just within the hotel, but the destination as well. I mean, um, Raleigh, where I'm based, was just listed as one of the most wired cities because they put in all these um, outlet charging stations for electric cars. And, and oh, cool. Boston Airport, Logan, has some kind of new thing where the, um, the planes can plug in at the terminal so that they've got air for the, for the passengers without having to run the, the fuel. Um, and so it, it, it reduces the stamp. And, you know, there are certain destinations that I would consider that are on the, the cutting edge of, of a lot of the green activities. And a lot of clients are really looking for that and looking towards that. And, and more and more are asking about carbon offsets. And again, that's something where the CVB can really help you say, well, you know, this hotel is doing this and this hotel is doing that. And, and because a lot of the older hotels are trying to, you know, incorporate programs that make them compete on a green factor because they might have an older um, fiscal plant that they can only do so much greening to, but it, they can work on their business practices. All good points. So but we'll take 9 and 10 kind of, you know, together in terms of 
understanding destination appeal. And I think this comes down a lot, I think even as you kind of touched on earlier, to attendance promotion. You know, mm -hmm. um, how will we really highlight what is to be offered, and then how will we engage our attendees, and when will we engage them in the broad appeal of the city, whether it's a well-known destination or even a lesser-known destination, in letting our attendees get excited about attending the meeting because of where we've chosen to take it. Right, and, and this is where the CVB is paramount because they can help you with marketing materials, messaging, information, um, you know, they, they're even doing, helping with HTML, email blasts and that type of thing. Um, and, and it is, a, you know, it's, it's a good way to not only promote your, your meeting but your destination as well because if it's an exciting destination and, and you do drum up some excitement about it, your attendees may come earlier or stay later and really experience the destination. We've all been to that conference where, gee, you know, it really seemed like a great city. I wish I could have gotten out of the hotel a little bit more to experience some, and, and I wish I had known. And if you work with your CVB um, and develop that relationship, they can help you market and you know drive your attendance numbers, and everybody's happy. All well, all well said, and, and really great point. So, Jennifer, I know you're an advocate of our industry, and we so appreciate that. But I want to really, um, you know, kind of garner for the planners that we have on the line that, you know, any destination partner can be identified, I think, as a good one by, um, you know, do they ask you the right questions? So a lot mm -hmm. of these questions that we've talked about today, um, you know, are they a good listener? And first impressions, I think, first and foremost, tell are very telling. You know, are they delivering on what is promised? Are they meeting the timelines that you establish up front, and you know, is being involved with them, um, you know, easing that burden of saving you both time and money as you, you know, move forward. So when you consider a destination and you think that you have, you know, uh, over 100,000 hotels and facilities in the U.S. to navigate, and the internet is really where we know, you know, Shima, I thought it was interesting your poll at the beginning because our statistics tell us that, you know, most planners hit about that five destination comparison, and that can be a lot of looking, a lot of research on the internet, and. We feel that um, not only are destination experts um, great resources, but that empowerment.com is a great resource to connect with those folks rather than to go and look them up at each one of their individual um, websites to be able to garner their information. You can go to one stop at empowerment.com and be able to search multiple destinations even submit one RFP to multiple cities at the same time, and then come back and manage a profile of your meetings, and then as Jennifer alluded to earlier, even be able to check histories or post event reports that cities have reported on your particular meeting. And that's so important to your negotiation to be able to capture a couple of years of history and your destination partners and empowerment can help you do that. So this is a screenshot of showing you what your profile at Empowerment would look like if you were a registered planner there and how you would be able to view and discuss your post-event report with your Convention and Visitors Bureau. So Shimo, we'd like to thank all of the planners for joining us today and um, CBB partners and this uh, class this webinar has been approved for CMP credit for 0.5 or 30 minutes clock hours. And the CMPIS domain is A, strategic planning. So that's how you'll fill out your form. And you'll be able to print your registration confirmation of, um, from your email as proof of your attendance. And then just simply list the course on your year-end detail. Well, Terry, thank you very, very much. And thank you to both of our panelists, Jerry and Jennifer. It's been a really excellent discussion, and we've had, had a lot of questions that have come across, um, many of which have been answered and, and answered as a result of the discussion. But we really appreciate all of you that are on the line today that have joined us for our webinar. And we do have these monthly webinars um, on a regular basis. So if you'd like to reach out to us, please do so, so through contact us at empowerment.com. As a result of you being on the webinar today, we will share with you 
the PowerPoint presentations that Terry, Jennifer, and Jerry have um, talked through. So again, thank you very, very much for joining us today. And um, we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you all. Thank you.